YouTube friends. I got AJ here. He's waving. Saying hi. Say hi. There you go. Oh, I'm going to try not to um, keep this video long. Um, I'm not really feeling too well. I just, <laughs> I just finished washing my hair and I am exhausted. So I'm going to eat in a little while and lay down. So I'm not feeling too well. I'm feeling a little weak. Um, <laughs> so in this video, I want to talk about um, basically all about um, where I get the the title ah! Super Mom's Journey from. The reason why I went with um, Super Mom's Journey is because um, the Super Mom part. Um, I basically, I always got a lot of stuff going on, and I always got, I always have a lot of things on my to-do list, and I always got this to do, I have this to do, I have that to get done, this to get done. AJ's getting into stuff. AJ, thank you, leave it alone. So basically trying to do it all, um, working full time. Um, when I started off as a mom, when I first had AJ, I was um, breastfeeding. So trying to balance all of that. And the journey part comes from basically how motherhood for me was basically um, a journey. I had this whole mindset that, you know, playing motherhood happens, boom, let's go. And it did not happen that way for me. <laughs> For me, um, I tried to plan everything out to the T. I was <laughs> I was one of those chicks that had the um, the, the calendar apps with um, tracking your cycle and your fertile days, all of that. So that was me. So 2014 in August I found out that I was pregnant for the first time and I was so excited um I've never been pregnant before so I was just like oh my gosh this is this is new this is crazy um we went in for my first doctor's appointment and the uh the tech she couldn't find um the baby so she found the sack but there was no baby so she printed a picture out um anyway just in case maybe you know i was just a little earlier than what we were thinking and um so my doctor said for me to come back two weeks later so i had the little picture and i was like doing everything i could to try to find like some little speck or something like oh it's the baby and um yeah so we went back two weeks later and still no baby and there was um the sack and it was growing but there was no baby in there growing so the doctor told me that it was um a blighted ovum and um so she gave me options for um what to do next i could either miscarry naturally I could take um, a pill to kick start it or I could do um, the DNC so I opted to go with the natural and by the end of that week um, I was I was miscarrying and um, it was like as soon as I found out that there wasn't a baby, it was like then my body just kind of like, okay, so then we need to go ahead and move forward. So then my body started to <laughs> uh, carry out the, the miscarrying process, and that was not fun at all. So that Saturday, I basically spent the day like in a lot of 
came. Um, it was that Friday night when the pain actually hit, and it was, it was terrible. I thought it was going to be like, you know, when your cycle is on and you have cramping or whatnot. I don't know why I thought that. Well, I mean, I didn't know. So, the pain hit, um, like that Friday afternoon, and it was terrible, and it was so terrible. The only thing I could do was just sleep. Because being awake, nothing helped. So the only thing I could, I, only way I could cope with it was to sleep. So um, I remember my husband coming home Friday, that Friday night, and I was laying on the couch sleep, and he woke me up, and I looked at him, and I just started crying because as soon as I woke up, that pain hit again. Basically, I spent that Saturday basically in labor, and. Um, that wasn't fun. And the whole process of, you know, when you're having a miscarriage, you you know that, you know, your body is, you know, releasing um you know what's what's not progressing properly. But when you going through the pain like that and going through this whole labor process and la actually laboring and knowing that you're not going to get a baby out of it, it's it's just, it's heartbreaking. By that Saturday night, um, I ended up finally um, <laughs> delivering the sack. And once that happened, all the pain was gone. So um, it was like I spent 24 hours in labor in pain. And knowing that I wasn't going to get to hold a little baby and um, it wasn't going to be a time for me to, to be happy and celebrate. So I went through the devastation of that loss and I basically just tried to look at it as, you know, it was the very first time my body is probably just trying to get used to the, used to this. It was something new. Um, my body had never been pregnant before, even though I'm thinking, okay, but that's, I'm a female, that's what my body is built for, but hey. So, um, it just it just didn't work out this time. So, okay, next time, everything will be fine. So, um, so, I, so the first pregnancy uh, was when I found out in August 2014, and I ended up um, miscarrying that first week in October. Um... So then, um, after my husband and I got over, you know, just the devastation of that first miscarriage, um, we decided to try again. So, um, eventually we tried again and, um, I found out that I was pregnant, um, in December of 2014. And, um, so once again, we were excited, we were happy. I had, um, of course, planned this one too. So, um, <laughs> we were excited. And, um, uh, but we decided this time that, you know, we wasn't going to, like, you know, tell anybody, you know, at first. Which we didn't really tell anybody the first time. Um, but when you do tell people... And then you do end up having a miscarriage. That whole process, process of having to go back and let people know what happened, with it, that basically adds to the devastation. Um, and so we decided that we were definitely going to really wait on telling too many people this time. And so I went to my uh, doctor's appointment and there was a baby so it was like oh and so then um, the doctor listened to the baby's heartbeat so I didn't know if it was because the machine was old or whatnot but the baby's heartbeat was um, was slow it sounded like a normal like my, how my heartbeat would sound and I know when you're checking the fetal's heartbeat that it's supposed to be basically like twice as fast as your own heartbeat. And it wasn't. So I didn't know if just the machine was old and the sound was 
was going in and out, which I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be like the best quality machine to use in a doctor's office. But, you know, I was I was trying to be positive and still trying to have some hope there. Like, you know, it's probably just, yeah, just the sound. So the, the heart wasn't, um, the heartbeat wasn't um, that fast. So once again, my doctor told me to come back in two weeks. And that basically was the sign to me that, okay, this isn't, this isn't a good thing. So, um... But she still congratulated me and everything and gave me, you know, a little pregnancy packet and stuff with info and numbers to call. So we went back two weeks later and um, this time it was the tech that checked the, <laughs> it was the tech the, that checked the, um, that did the sonogram. And baby was still there, but this time there was no heartbeat. So then, you know, I, I, I stayed strong in the doctor's office and, you know, was listening and, okay, okay, so this is what's going on, okay. All right, so these are my options again, okay. Um, so, my doctor, of course, gave me the same three options as she did the first time. And, um, <laughs> I originally decided to go with the, you know, natural miscarry again. And then after being home a little while, thinking about it, and I thought about the first time, and I was like, I really don't want to go through this again. Like, go through all the, the pain and the misery and all to know that, you know, I'm not going to have, you know, I'm not going to have, be able to have a baby that I'll be able to hold and snuggle with. So I I told my I told my husband I really want to do the um DNC. So I called the doctor's office, made the appointment to do the DNC. So I went and had the DNC done. Um the following week. And so that wasn't as hard. Cause I didn't have to deal with the whole laboring process, um, but basically I ended up having like my grieving moments later, um, like weeks, months later, and just you know realized that you know all of this and all I wanted was to be a mom, and I didn't think it was gonna be this hard. All the little apps and stuff that I had, all the little planners and everything, I deleted all of that. I threw all that away. I was like, you know what, I'm done with all of this. Um, I'm just going to let it <laughs> let what happens, happen. And I'm, I'm going to stop trying to be in control and just let things um, just go the way that they're supposed to. Instead of me trying to make things go the, the way that I want them to go. So, I had, I found out that I was pregnant with this second pregnancy in December 2014, and I had the DNC, um, February 2015, it was two, it was February 17th, um, 2015, when I had that done. I was still devastated and I just, I, I didn't want to keep trying and, and having to keep dealing with heartbreak and I, I didn't feel like I was strong enough anymore to deal with that and so then I got the big surprise so I had the DNC February 17th. 2015 um I found out <laughs> uh the first week in June 2015 that I was pregnant again and my reaction to that basically I found out the same way that I found out um with this pregnancy like I was just feeling a certain way 
And I was like, well, um, you know, my cycle hasn't come on. It's, it's late, like a week and a half late. I'm going to take a pregnancy test just to rule that out. Like, I, I, I took the pregnancy test to rule that option out. Like, I'm not pregnant. I'm going to go and just take this test so I can say that's definitely not it. So no one can try to say, oh, you're pregnant. So I took the test and sure enough, I was pregnant. And I was, I was in shock. And I was scared. I was terrified. And I was, I was like, I, I didn't want to go through the heartbreak again. So I was scared. Um, I told my husband, and he was in shock too. So we was just like, whoa, wow, are we, are we, are we ready for this? Or. <laughs> You know, just that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did when we found out we was pregnant with you. Uh, yeah, we were we were like, whew. Uh, so it was the first week in June 2015. And the good thing about that was I just ended, um, just got out of school. Um, so school was out, so I had a summer off. So... I got, I basically put myself on bed rest <laughs> for the entire summer. I, I, I laid down. I didn't do too much. Um, I made sure I had others to help me with things. And, um, yeah. So after I found out that I was <laughs> pregnant with him, it was probably that next week I really started getting, um, symptoms like I, I started well let me just say this I started getting nauseous and just extremely tired and I didn't have that the, the first two times so when I had that with AJ I was like okay I'm nauseous I'm at the point like I couldn't laugh because I, I it would it would shake me up too much and, and I'm like mm -hmm. so <laughs> so I was like okay so I think this is a good thing so, um, I couldn't eat certain things, and so I went to my doctor's appointment, my first doctor's appointment, and sure enough, there was a baby there, and there was a strong heartbeat, too. So, it, everything was good. So, then my doctor scheduled my next appointment for four weeks. So, I was like, yes, this is good, this is good. Yes, it is. It was good, AJ. It was good. <laughs> to... Yeah, so so to fast forward from there, I found out that first week in June 2015 that I was pregnant with AJ, and um, it was a full-term pregnancy. AJ actually went a week past his due date, and um, so I went in to get induced because I could not, I could not take it any longer. I was ready for that baby to get out and he was a big boy so when he was born he was yeah he was eight pounds <laughs> eight pounds even oh, i was like oh my gosh i never would have imagined and the thing about that is that aj was born in 2016 february 16 2016 and so, to be able to spend that next day in the hospital holding our little newborn on February 17, 2016, exactly a year after I had that DNC, I was, I was glad that um, I, I decided not to just, you know, just quit altogether. Um, and I had, you know, my fears and I had, you know, my worries and... Um, and, you know, just, you know, it, it, it I, I can't even describe it really in words and people, they try to, you know, give you words of comfort and when they haven't really dealt with something like that, it, it's kind of hard for them to really say the right things because a lot of people said things trying to comfort us, but they weren't really comforting. It was like, you know, sort of like, how, how dare you say that? 
but they really didn't mean any harm but it was just like because to me these these are you know these 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 are my babies and I'm not gonna be able to hold them and that hurts so um being able to you know hold this newborn in the hospital that we just had and knowing everything that we had just went through before it was just like like it really was a breath of fresh air and it truly truly was a blessing and and it it, it still is it's 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 still is he blowing kisses Mwah. can i have this Mwah. Mwah. give me a kiss Mwah. yeah AJ was over here on the floor crying while I was trying to record, so that's why I gave him the pacifier. We about to, we about, we about to get rid of this thing, though. We're going to get rid of this. Yes. Yeah, so y'all make sure you go to my, um, <laughs> make sure you go to my blog um, page, because I'm going to have um, a post on my journey of getting rid of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy, mommy shouldn't have started that in the first place. So, that's basically the backstory as to why um, I go with the Supermom's Journey title. Because that has been my journey so far. Uh, my journey to motherhood. And it was definitely a, a journey. It was a tough one. And it was really tough for me because I went in with this whole mindset that, oh, hey... Whenever I'm ready to have kids, hey, just have kids, and that's it. And you don't realize that it, it's not always that easy for everybody. And yeah, it's that easy. It's not always. It's not always that easy for everybody. I had to go and turn the light on. It was starting to get dark, so the sun is setting. So I was losing all my natural light. So I'm hoping that um I don't look too yellow. But yeah, um, also I have a memorial um, page set up on my blog site um, um, on supermomsjourney.com. So if you take out my website and go to memorial, um, it's a place that I have set up for all of you moms that have lost children of your own um, and miscarriages, um, stillbirths, or um, lost children after they were born. Um, it's a place for you to basically um, have them recognized. Now for questions. For those of you, you're clapping. For those of you that have dealt with miscarriage, um, what were some ways that helped you um, deal with it? Like, what were some things that helped um, with comfort? Um, just basically to share some ideas for other moms that may be going through it right now. For inspiration, I want to... Um, inspire all of you moms um, that have dealt with loss. I want to say that pregnancy loss it does cause um, it, it does causes you to have fear and and because you know you become afraid and worried about future pregnancies and if you're gonna have to deal with losses again if you're ever gonna be able to become a mom or have another child and um, it's 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 a lot on you pregnancy laws may cause you know may cause you to fear but don't don't let it um be encouraged be strong and don't don't let it cause you to have um fear um second timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse, verse 7, says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and a sound mind. Yeah. So we have the power of love 
and we're not given the spirit of fear. So don't even don't even let that spirit attach to you. Don't even let it. And um, when you're going through something like that, it feels very very easy to let that happen. But I'm here to say, don't. Also, I wanted to read Philippians chapter 4, um, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So, remember... When you're dealing with, you know, pregnancy loss, really, really when you're dealing with anything that brings you down, don't let it develop fear in you. Keep moving forward. Um, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's, 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 it's going to hurt. But don't let it develop fear in you. We do not have the spirit. We were not given the spirit of fear. So do not, do not let that attach itself. <clears throat> to you mm -hmm. because fear will keep you from moving forward and you don't want to be in that place you want to be able to move forward so that way you can at least reach the point of having your blessing so also um another verse which became my favorite and this is what helped me um basically just stay strong through it all and keep positive even though I was hurting but I still you know stay positive and you know just 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 kept moving on which is Romans 12 and 12 which is rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer and that meant a lot to me because it basically told me what I needed to do to keep going and to not let that spirit of fear get to me. Um, so the fact that I still had hope of being a mom, I needed to rejoice in that. I needed to be happy in that and be excited in that and be patient in tribulation. I was, I was going through a hard time. So... I needed to be patient. Be patient. Get through it. It it it's gonna hurt. <laughs> it will hurt. It will hurt. But get through it, and it will it will heal. Um, and be constant in prayer. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Basically, have that relationship with God and um. And praying to him through Jesus Christ. So just keeping that connection and keeping that hope and keeping that patience that gave me the instructions on what I needed to do to get through my devastation of um, miscarriages and not reaching the point of being a mom yet. So um, now because I've done that, I've reached the point where I've become a mom and now I get to become a mom a second time. So that's my answer to <laughs> to my own question um, about how to deal with um, losses and how to have that comfort. That comfort is in Jesus. So honestly, I feel like there's nothing, like there's no better comfort. Um, just to add to that, there's this song that I love, um, <laughs> that I hear on the radio and, um, it's called Fearless and, um, I think it's a real good pick me up and it's very encouraging. Um, uh, I have a, a link to it, um, in the description box. Um, so with that being said, we are going to say bye. Say bye, Jay. Give me that. Say bye. Bye. And I will see you all um, next week. And <laughs> as I told you, I just got through washing my hair. So next week's video, I'm going to be talking about hair. So make sure you 
Um, check that out and I will see you all then.